we're going to go dive into NumPy. So just know this is under Coding Basics, looking under NumPy, intro to NumPy. All right. So the first thing you should know about NumPy, and you'll see this again in topic four, so don't feel like you have to like memorize all this right now, but I just want to kind of introduce you all, is that uh, NumPy basically is, you can think of it as it's a package or a library. Um, you have you would normally have to install it, but if you have your learn co environment, or sorry, your learn environment set up, you don't have to reinstall anything. It's already installed. Um, and so what this is basically is a whole set, like a huge amount of like different um, written code that someone already wrote essentially. And it's actually from an open source community. It's been developed for a long time. Um, we can actually import this code that's basically someone else wrote, right? That's what a package really is. We can do import NumPy, which is the name of the package because it's already installed. And note that we'll usually see like if we just do import NumPy, so I'm just going to ignore this part right here, but we could have just done import NumPy and then use NumPy. But a lot of times since we use NumPy over and over and over again, we'll abbreviate it, say import it as NP. And that basically kind of gives us a little shortcut so we don't have to type out NumPy every single time. We'll instead uh, type out NP when we reference it. And I'll show you all we mean by reference it. And then later on, we'll also use pandas. So just know that import pandas as PD is a common convention. You technically could like write whatever you want here, right? But the convention is usually sticking with something that like everyone knows what it's called. Like, so NumPy is usually NP, pandas is PD. In fact, sometimes you'll see code and they won't even write this part and you'll just see NP dot and then does something or PD dot something and just know that you're supposed to import this first. Okay, cool. So when I run this right here, basically this is just saying, hey, use all the code from before. Um, if anyone's already done some more py Python, or especially if you looked up other code, you might see something like import, um, or say from NumPy import star, right? I don't know, has anyone seen something like this before with like the star import? Okay, this in general, this is done a lot online. Um, in general, it's considered bad practice. It's not really a good idea. And the reason why is because if NumPy or whoever you're importing the packages from, has a package that's named a certain thing, like a, sorry, a function that's named a certain thing, it's just gonna import the name of that function. The problem is like, what if you wrote a function that has that same exact name? It's just gonna overwrite it. So it can be really unclear, especially as we go through like NumPy, Pandas, sklearn, other packages, especially if they're all related to data science, they might sometimes clash in the names that they have. So you might actually have two packages that have the same name and then you call the code and you don't know which package is using what. Like, so it's important just to, usually it's good practice to actually import um, as like at least an abbreviation. Okay, make sense? Cool, all right, um, cool. We'll see more of this. Like you'll see me write these things all the time. So we imported NumPy and Pandas too. We're getting more into Pandas. Uh, NumPy, um, there's a whole bunch of stuff in NumPy um, in there. And it's not just for data science, it's for, you know, numerical uh, calculations with Python. Um, I already referenced before Python Data Science Handbook. They have a great chapter in there for NumPy. I really highly recommend it, especially after diving into topic four and you want a little bit more extra practice with NumPy. Um, I think the author does a really great job of explaining a lot of different aspects. Um, when we get really deep into this stuff, I might go into talking about like why it's different from the normal Python. But what you should generally know is that NumPy with the same operations that Python does tends to be a little bit faster. Um, and the big reason why it tends to be faster is essentially comes down to overhead is that Python kind of lets you just do whatever you want, right? So you can put like whatever you want to the list. Um, anyone who's coming from like C programming or Java programming or other programming languages where you have to declare the variable type, um, which I think like Chuck had mentioned in an office hours once like, oh yeah, I didn't have to declare um, the variable. Um, it's kind of nice because you don't have to do anything. You just kind of like, just kind of do whatever you want and Python will figure it out. The thing is, is that there's overhead. <laughs> like basically Python says you can do whatever you want, but it means I have to work a little bit harder to make this work, which ends up being a little bit slower um, and sometimes a lot slower. And NumPy basically um, allows you to um, reference variables and reference these things in a quicker manner. Um, it's a little more structured, but it ends up being much quicker. And it turns out we'll find out that NumPy is the basis of another package called pandas, which we'll use a whole lot of. So understanding NumPy will really help you use pandas, which is probably what you use a whole lot throughout your um, data science um, like day. Okay. So first thing I wanna talk about in NumPy is arrays. So an array is really similar to a list, um, but there are extra efficiencies and stuff like this. Again, like 
um, the, the Python data science handbook actually talks a lot about this, but we'll kind of skip over that for now. Um, so note that this right here, this would be like normally a list, and I can actually make this into an array by doing np.array. So if I run this now, you actually see it's a little bit different notation. So you can see here, basically it's like one, two, three, fourth, but you'll see that it actually has this array um, parentheses. Note that um, this is because um, Jupyter Notebook does display, but if you do print, just know that there's a little bit of difference. So we do display versus um, print my array. You can see it's slightly different and note that's different from print, uh, let's say one, two, three, uh, four. So note that they're slightly different from each other. So if you do display or have my array at the end, you'll see it like this, which I think is really nice because it explicitly is telling you, hey, this is a NumPy array, you know, versus like trying to confuse you with lists. This right here, when you do print, it's still showing, you know, like it's different from a list, but it's a little subtle, right? There's no commas versus this last one is a uh, Python list. Okay, does that make sense to everyone? And I realize I'm going to keep the chat open over on the side so I can see you all, like if you ask questions or anything. Because um, I realize sometimes I don't hear it go off. All right. Uh, so just again, numpy, this is np.array, and basically saying using the numpy function called array, create an array. And that's what it's going on here. So we can do some really cool things. So have, we, have you all seen range before with Python? See, I see some thumbs up. I see some head shakes. Just know range. Um, so I do range of 10. You, you normally can't see anything like this. It goes basically from zero to 10. If I do list of range, it basically just creates a list from zero to 10, okay? And so we can actually use that same terminology here with an array. So we can actually say, hey, create an umpy array um, with lots of, like, lots of different ways. So one, we can use a range. So we can say range of 10, and, then, and you all can like play around with range. There's a whole bunch of the extra parameters you can play around with, but we can actually do that and it'll actually print out uh, a NumPy array with this range, okay? Um, we can also use a tuple. So I mentioned tuples before. So this is five, two, three, but note that it's a tuple instead. And we can actually create a NumPy array. These are all NumPy arrays and then same thing with a list. Okay, cool. Any questions so far? Seems make pretty much sense, right? Cool, all right. So um, what, why, what's so special about arrays? Well, the real cool thing about an array is that um, it does things that list can't. So list zero, we're just gonna find this list here. And we have one, two, three. If I do list zero plus four, what happens? It's gonna add. Add, so add, gonna add in what way? Or append, we'll just append. Append, so I'll put four on the end, right? Yeah. Yeah, it turns out not exactly, right? It turns out like, so oh, that's right, because we can't add a list and a number together, but we could do, list plus the list of four by itself and then it will append. Okay, so we can see there's a little bit of difference there, right? So it was like, okay, like, you know, you might know it's like, oh, that's right. But if we add four, it'll append it, but like, oh, that's right. I have to put on, you know, this bracket right here to say, oh, add these lists together. And that's how we kind of concatenate together. Okay, so like, okay, that's a little subtle difference, but if we knew what we're doing, you know, just adding it to the end of the list. Um, I don't know about you all, but like sometimes when I look at this, and I see this plus four in my head. I think like maybe this is my math background. I think of like one plus four, two plus four, three plus four. And I see some head nods too. And yeah, that's kind of like what I think. So like this, this to me still kind of like mentally kind of breaks me a little bit. I'm like oh, that's right. It doesn't add them together. Just adds it to the end. Okay, so it's a little difference. Okay, what about multiplication? Does anyone know what happens? I have list zero, one, two, three. If I do multiply multiply by three, what happens? Even take a guess of like what would it feel right. It won't work, probably. Wouldn't work, give an error. Who says error? I think we'll probably give error. I never tried error. That. Anyone think it's anything different? It's kind of. Uh, maybe it'll multiply three by each of the numbers. Yeah, I kind of like, like what I was saying before, right? It'd be kind of like, like one times three, two times three, three times three. So you'd get a list with like three, six, nine, right? Okay, that's one other option that could ha supposed to happen. Anyone have other guesses what could happen? I mean, other than error. Yeah, this is a fun one. This is, it turns out, it just makes a copy three times, of course, right? <laughs> like, and I think this kind of like, when you think about it, it's like, oh, I guess that kind of makes sense. That's like saying list zero 
plus list zero, you know, plus list zero. It's like, oh, okay, I can kind of see what Python's doing in here. Um, so that's what's going on here, which again, mm -hmm. you would either think probably error or, you know, multiply each one. Okay, what about division? Anyone know what happens with division? So option one I like is error, right? It can always give an error. So maybe it doesn't do something. Anyone else got to guess what could happen? Maybe make three lists. Maybe make three lists. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of like, that's a little different from this though, right? Or like the same as this. Yeah. Now you're kind of starting to think like, what else could Python try to throw at me, right? <laughs> like. <laughs> I just threw the error. <laughs> Yeah. So in this one, I, I, I won't make you guys think too hard. It, it just, it gives an error. It says, no, you can't do that. <laughs> like, it's just like not allowed, like not even going to try. Um, so good thing to know. Note that um, I didn't mention this before, but note that this is a little secret is that um, a list or a string like A um, is just like, is actually syntactic sugar for a list. Um, so you can actually see is that if I have this guy right here, this will actually multiply by three. So that's also why we can also do plus, you know, that and that adds on there. So it actually works very similar to this, which is why also if I do like another list or sorry, a string here, it also gives an error. You can't do that. Okay. So we saw some interesting things that happen. Um, as your list zero, list one, we can print this out. We can add them together. Um, and this one, I like this because like this, like in my head, like immediately goes, oh, like it would be so nice to just add these together, like zero plus three, one plus four, two plus five. But of course we already know it's just gonna put it together, right? So NumPy arrays look like a lot like lists, but the whole focus is about numbers and calculation and mathematics, right? So you can see here, I have a NumPy array. I started with zero this time, zero, one, two, three. And it turns out we can actually add three to a list and guess what that's gonna do? It's actually gonna add, add three to each one. Subtract three from each one, multiply three by each one, divide by three on each one. So in my head, this, this, is, this makes me go, ah, like back to like what I feel like is normal math, right? Like this is very mathematics, right? He's like, oh, you distribute the three across or something like that. So it's a really convenient thing. And then we also have this adding arrays. So before with um, lists, when we added this list together, it just concatenated. But based on this, like what you've seen right here, what do you think will happen when we add two NumPy arrays together? Doesn't I add them together, like each index, like index zero to index zero? And index yeah, two. so index zero means zero, so. and then three will be the first element, and then element one, wise four, addition. five, and that's exactly right. Like, and that's very like you can see here. There's the first array, the second array, and then the arrays added together, and you can see basically it's just being added for each index. Yeah, so pretty nice, right? So this is where NumPy arrays are actually really useful um, in calculation because we can treat them kind of like, I mean, you can hear the array. Think array, you can kind of think matrix. So if anyone remembers back in school of matrices, is anyone, give me thumbs up if everyone, how we feel about matrices. Thumbs up if we know what those are. Is anyone like thumbs down like, I don't know what a matrix is. Okay, I think everyone at least has heard the, the term matrix, even if it's been a while, so that's good. All right, um, that's here. So I'll tell you what, I, I'm technically at the hour right now, but um, like I said, like next week we'll definitely be going an hour and a half. Are you guys good if I just kind of continue on to finish this um, notebook? I see. Up, cool. All right. So let's go to some little more complicated stuff. Multidimensional, right? So I call it multidimensional because we usually say like this like row of an array is one dimensional. It's just basically one dimension of just like a number line, right? So we can have two-dimensional, like a, a 2D array. So or a 2D matrix, right? So we can actually create this array and note that we can say 0, 1, 2, comma, right? 3, 4, 5, comma, 6, 7, 8, comma. Right? So, oh good, someone said they just did this on the MIT course. Yeah, so like, this is a very common thing that yes, now we can actually do uh, matrix multiplication. So if we actually write this right here, it's nice we actually get this nice array. And I guess I should have referenced this up here is that let's say we go back to NPR zero. We have this array. We can also reference like the very first element. It's like, oh, here, get me the very first element, which would be zero. Okay, and give me like the very last element. Too. So it acts very much like a list. We can do those similar operations and stuff like that. Um, and here, you'll notice that basically the first element is an array, right? It's kind of like an array within an array. And the second element is a different array. And the third element is another array. So I can actually reference this is that if I do um, R2D, the first element, right? What would that give me? 
Anyone got a guess? First array, zero, one, two. Oh no, is someone talking? I can't hear them. Yeah. I'm sorry, everyone. I can't hear you all again. I don't know what's Zoom, you're killing me today. I don't hear anything. All right, can someone try talking again? Is anyone talking now? No, I can't hear you. Oh, ah. Aaron, I feel so bad. I'm going to get, these are not my normal headphones too. And now I've, I'm curious if there's just like weird, I'm curious if there's just like weird stuff happening now. Now we can, cannot hear you. Yeah. Okay. I'm in the middle. Just the middle. Is, is it quiet? Yeah. It's okay though. Okay, it's okay. All right. I'm so sorry, everyone. I don't. I see some head shakes though. From is Brian or Sam? You can't hear me. No, you're just quiet. Okay. Quieter. Very yes. quiet, but Very it's getting quiet. a little bit louder. Is this louder. better or worse? Ooh, better. That's, that's a little better. Bit Still low? No, too loud. <laughs> is that better? Yes. Yeah. I'm so sorry, everyone. <laughs> All right. Hopefully that's, is this good now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll get through this. I promise. <laughs> um, I don't know what's up with my head. I'm going to definitely use different ones for next time. I don't stink in Zoom. I'm going to blame Zoom, not me. <laughs> All right. Um, sorry, someone was saying something and I couldn't hear. At least I assume I couldn't hear. Um, was it's it in the chat box now. It's in the chat box? Okay. Eric, I think. Eric, what was your question? It wasn't oh, a question. It was, it, was, it was the answer to your question. You said, oh, what, right. what, what, would, yeah. what would it give if you ask for the first uh, index of that 2D array? And I just said, yeah. Perfect. Yes, thank you. You got, you got it right, Eric. You know, tell me, I'm going to put this right here. <laughs> you guys can like... If you guys send me messages or something like that, I can see it too and everything. Okay. Um, yeah, that's right. So we can reference like saying, oh, the first element. Now, this is now another array. If I wanted the first element of this guy, right, I can put zero again, right? And then I can get that zero. So this is kind of like referencing saying like what row and then what column I'm getting. So I can say, okay, let me the first row, second column, which is this guy right here. How would I, how would I, or sorry, say the first row, the second row, second column, how would I um, put that in here to get the number four? One, one. One, one, yeah. So the, first, the second row, right, so it starts with one, right? And second column, do that. What if I wanted, um, let's say eight here, or let's say um, six, what would I put in here? Two, zero. Two, zero. Good, right? So you can kind of see a little bit. It's like I can say uh, row is equal to two, uh, column equals zero. And then you can see this is row and this is column. Cool. Sound pretty good? Yeah. So you can kind of navigate through this guy. Now I'm going to do something really fun. I'm going to have a 3D array. Now, as you probably can tell, I can't put 3D really on like the screen as easily. Um, and so NumPy doesn't even try. Um, you can see here is that the key part to realize, and I like display, well, I'm gonna actually keep print because print keeps it nice and easy for us to read. Otherwise we have a bunch of arrays, um, keywords, is that you can see here is that this is the start of the NumPy array. And the first element is this whole thing. Everyone see that? So the first element of the 3D array is a 2D array. And then the second element is a different 2D array. And the third element is a different 2D array, okay? And you can see in the 2D array, of course, the first element is a 1D array and so on. So what's nice is that we can actually pull these out. So just to kind of show you again right here, let's just copy this over, make this 3D. 
and let's just do, um, I don't know, <laughs> let's say depth. So we can see if I put depth here, I should probably make this a little bit different. Let's do one. There we go. So you can see this guy right here. So our depth is our very first one saying how, like, how deep are we into this, right? So this is like depth zero, depth one, depth two. Hopefully that makes sense to everyone. And then you can see I could just do the normal thing. It's like, okay, once I get that part, I can grab the specifics of this 2D array. And if I got rid of this, you'll see, for example, it would just be that whole 2D array. See that? Cool. Make sense? What if um, mm -hmm. instead of singular numbers, you put like, two colon or like make it a two. range like two Ooh, colon three okay so they could like output a different array so like two um let's just let's start with zero right because two is already at the end like zero yeah. one like or let's say two so i'll grab us the two elements in there right because this is kind of like a list there you go you can see that is that basically it's getting the first depth which is depth one and then it's saying grab rows zero two Right. Oh, I should say columns too. I kind of mix it, mix it up. Um, but it's saying grab these uh, parts right here and grabbing this part. So you can start arranging and different lists. And that's actually the next part is that you can start uh, slicing and dicing different parts of the NumPy array um, to grab not just one element, but a set of elements and stuff like this. Okay. Note that if we did something like four and stuff like this, this would actually give an error. Oh, no, that doesn't give an error. Why does it give an error? Hmm. Think about that for a second now. If you you see if you get confused too, a good thing to do is just like let's let's back up. We have this guy right here. 9, 10, 11, 12, right? And then let's just say, okay, we're gonna grab the zeroth element, which should be this row. Let's do two. See that? And then I'm gonna grab the zeroth one, right? Oh, in this case, though, it's just going to be this guy right here. You can see that. So just to kind of go repeat right there, I got to this point saying grab the first depth, which is this one, then grab the first two rows. And then it's saying grab the first element of that, which is just going to be this guy right here. So you can see this kind of kind of. You, you kind of have to break things down slowly, right? And to make sure we know each part, but we could separate each one and get each part in there. Can you say that one more time? I think I got it, I just wanna make sure. <laughs> All right. Um, so one thing is that this can get really complicated. You can have like, like 4D, 5D, 6D, you know, like many, many dimensions and we call this the shape. Um, and so we can actually print out the shape and it's basically saying like how many rows, how many columns, how many you know, extra dimensions each point has. Um, if I had, let's just put in another one of these guys, just to make it a little obvious. There we go. You can see I have another one right here. This 3D shape, you can see there's four depths, right? One, two, three, four. And you can see that's the dimension right here. So basically we can see like how many elements we can get into. Okay. Make sense? So you'll see this a lot to like debug things and such. All right, um, cool. we'll keep going through this notebook. Uh, any questions, I guess, before I move on, we saw. I know this is kind of like, honestly, mind bending and stuff like that and sometimes kind of take some time just to kind of play around with, um, but uh, just know what you can kind of like mess around, try things out. So Victor, can you hear me? Okay, so I'll move on. Um, some built-in stuff. So we can use some built-in functions, like for example, np.zeros. This will actually create a zero, like, a matrix of all zeros. Oh no, <laughs> what is wrong? All right, my gosh. All right, um, hold on, Sam. <laughs> Linux Bluetooth drivers, apparently, I guess. Um, that's weird, I've never had any issues until today with this, but who knows? Okay, can someone try saying something right now? Hello, can you hear me? I don't know who's talking, if anyone's talking. Okay, I don't hear anyone right now. What is okay, two plus so let two? Let me try some. <laughs> I don't know. 
I think between uh, Victor, what I'm going to play with this stuff later too, just to make sure. I'm kind of playing with my settings right now. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, good point, Brian. Might have to restart office hours or before office hours. I'm worried that it's not a restart issue, though. That's kind of my biggest concern. I think I have a solution, though, if um if I can't figure it out. All right, I think, can someone try saying something now? <laughs> I'm assuming people are probably, I'm assuming people are probably trying to say something. Uh... There, I can hear you now. All right. I don't know what it is. It's definitely not my my Bluetooth disconnecting, it's definitely something with the sound actually being output. Um, but okay. All right, we'll get through this. Uh, Sam, Sam R had a question? Yeah, so for the three-dimensional, I'm still thinking of it as like, you know, which, dim like which, you just do that part again where you're like referencing. So like the first index is the first dimension, second index, I mean, that first index just represents which dimension and then drills down further and further, correct? That's how you have mm -hmm. to think about it, kind of. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the, the best way. You can think of this, this the very end is we're getting to 1D, right? And then we're kind of moving upwards, right? And getting subsets of that. Um, I still have to like kind of mentally map out sometimes like I'm slicing stuff up. Um, but um, honestly, it works. It makes a lot more sense when you have references versus just a bunch of numbers and saying like, what does each part represent? For example, um, this is usually how we represent uh, pictures is different pixel values. And for example, if you have um, a RGB picture, a picture with color, you actually have a three-dimensional data set where the 2D um, matrix is each value of each pixel in the two-dimensional picture. And then you have multiple colors and each third dimension is a different, like how much red is there? How much blue is there? How much green is in there? Um, and I find that's a lot more easy to understand versus sometimes like doing this is a little, you have to like do a little too abstract. So um, just know that reference. Like, I think it's sometimes you just have to play around with it and see what works. Cool. Um, I'm afraid now like my sound's gonna go out and I'm gonna miss someone's question. Um, <laughs> um, all right, so I move on. Sound good? Okay, cool. All right. Hopefully I answered your question too, Sam. Um, all right, so we can also use zeros here for three dimensions, like for, for ThumbPy. So this will actually create a, a matrix with all zeros. And this is actually the dimension three, four, five. This is the shape that we'll use. Um, if I'm being better, I probably would have done it like this because that makes it more clear that it's like, oh, that is the shape versus like, you know, a list. And you can see here, it creates a bunch of zeros where we have one, two, three, you know, 2D matrices, and then four rows, one, two, three, four for each one, and then five columns, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is a really quick way to make a bunch of zeros essentially. Um, some algorithms you will actually have to start off with zeros, so it's useful. Um, one thing I didn't note, no, you I have to have all of these, um, and yes, they are floats in this case for zeros. Um, NumPy um, defaults to floating uh, point values unless you specifically say use um, integer values. So good point out. Um, you do have to keep the same shape amongst all the dimensions. So you can't have like this 2D matrix be a four by five, but this one be like a three by two. It has to be the same shape across the whole thing. Okay. And partly that's because of the efficiency of ThumbPy. It requires you to do that. Okay. Um, similar, we can do with all ones. See all ones. And you can see, again, it's a float. And then uh, you can also say specific, so np.fool. And then saying specifically, I want this number 27, but note that this should be a, oh, it is an integer. So I think in this case, if I do a 27 point like this, I think in this case, the function actually looks for if it's an integer or not. Okay. So you can see, I can put a specific number. Um, note that I can also do some fun stuff in here is that I can say like um, np.fool with dimension of five of range five creates a list right here. Um, this unfortunately would, sounds really cool because we could do like, oh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, right? Or I guess 9. And it would be nice to have like a two by like um, different shape, but you can see that won't happen. <laughs> it's, it's not nice enough to figure that out. But there are some tools that you can do like np. 
dot reshape. And for example, I can reshape. Let's see if it's like, oh, what does this do exactly? Oops. You can see a little bit of parameter. We have A is the actual array and the new shape we want. So in this case, let's do np.reshape of range of 10. So range of 10, you guys can match is like zero all the way through nine, right? That's what it would be. And I can reshape it to a different shape of let's say uh, five comma two. And you can see I can now have a different shape now here, which is really convenient. Um, if I, of course, did something like um, 10 comma 1, that would work fine too, right? But note that I couldn't do something like 8 comma 1, or at least I don't think so. I think it would give me an error. Yeah. So, and there's other subtleties, to be honest, that like NumPy has and such. Um, note that um, I should say is that this is different, right? This um, array is different if than this array. You guys see the difference on this part? So a lot of times this is the default of what we would necessarily want, right? Of like saying, oh, this is the array size we want. But this one right here basically saying each each row has its own element in here versus like one big row. Okay. Cool. Um, all right, let's see here. <laughs> I spent so much time filling with my uh, sound that I feel bad that we're like taking this long to get to this point. Um, I also kind of quickly show shows like we can also do some interesting stuff. And NumPy has some random packages. This is really useful for like statistical stuff that we need to do. So we can, for example, say, hey, okay, NumPy.random.randInt, that's the actual function, generate a random integer function called low equals zero, or low is, low is zero high is 10, so go from 0 to 10, and then have a size from 5 to 8. So this will actually create a NumPy array of the shape 5, 8, where the numbers are randomly chosen uniformly from 0 to 10. So you can see here, that's what's going on here. So um, this can be really convenient to actually like, you know, generate something really quickly. Um, also note that if I didn't put this size here, this would just generate one number. So. You can see it just turns a number every single time. Okay, cool. Um, let's see here. We have, oh, the reason why I did this though was because you can do, like I mentioned, you can do the same stuff you would with a normal um, list, right? We can get the first row, we can get the last row, we can get multiple rows. You can see here. Then we can also get um, sub arrays. So this is a little more complicated, but basically the idea here is saying, okay, from this row to this end, oh, I didn't, I didn't actually point that out to the CS. So I was talking about slicing like each individual part, but this is where um, NumPy is actually really useful um, on here. And just I just want to make sure if anyone has a question, because can someone say something just to make sure I can still hear? I see you all muted. Hi. I see Sam unmuted, but I can't hear him. Oh no. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna kind of show you all this, and then if there are questions, um, we'll figure that out. Okay, um, just write it in this little chat box if you can um, and go through. But uh, if I have a row, let's say r zero, we showed a little bit. We could get like the first element in there, which will be just um, the row, right? And then getting like like one through five, right? Like we can then get like or one through five, we able to get like these guys, right? So you can see we can do that. But what's really nice is that if we go back to R0, right, I'm going to keep that up there, is that we can actually select certain elements in there. Like we would normally think of like, um, like kind of positional arguments. And what's nice is kind of thinks more like, you know, like X, Y, Z coordinates. So for example, if I wanted, you know, in this case, like the first part to the second one, say to the third one, and then getting just this, um, this part, you can see it's like, well, what did just happen here? We well, have eight, zero, five. Oh, this is not really super useful. Let's do, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase this. Uh, I'll just go back to pass vector, that's okay. Oops, I'm breaking myself today. Okay, so if we go to this guy, you can see like, well, what's going on here? It's actually getting this little subset, nine, two, 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 five, or two, 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 five, five, two, three, seven. And I wrote it this way just so first to read it better and I'll rewrite it up here. We can see row start to row end, comma, column start to column end. So what I really did, if I made it a little smaller, is the row start 
two to seven, and then three to six. Okay, so basically saying, okay, I'm getting the rows um, zero, one, two, starting from this part. And I put seven here. So just know that it just knows, oh, just keep going if it goes past this part. So I could just in like the list notation where two colon to the very end. So it gets the third row represented by two and then all the way to the end, right? So it's getting all of these rows and then saying, all right, get these columns. So this is zero column, first column, second column, third. So starting here and then going um, four, five, six. So it's getting just these columns right here. Or I should say not up to six because it's at the very end. So it gets up to these columns and then just these rows and I get that part. So that makes sense to people? Okay, cool. And this is the notation that we normally will be using. So this is like, you can technically, like you can see like there were some issues um, if I did it with the, like instead of having multiple brackets where I'm like getting this array and then getting this array. What's nice about this is I can say specifically what row or column I want. And I know I can also say, I just want that row three, right? But only those columns and I can get just this part right here, okay? So, and what's nice is that I can do this with multiple dimensions and this matches the dimensions as I go up at higher and higher in NumPy. And note that let's say I, I want, um, I want uh, three to six here, just I want these columns, but I want every row, but I want every, just the columns three to three, four, five. I can actually put colon here, which remember goes from the beginning to the end. And that gives me every row from here all the way to the end, but only columns three, four, five. Make sense? Cool. All right. Um, I'd say any questions, but I know I can't hear you all. Um, any questions? All right, good. Thank you, Becky. <laughs> Can you give an example of a data question you would use arrays to solve? Good. So because um, uh, Pandas will actually use NumPy, like Pandas actually uses NumPy in the background, um, our data will be organized into NumPy situations. And so we can organize our data into arrays in this way. And then we can reference saying only get like the 12th record all the way to the 15th record or you know, however many hundreds and stuff like that, or say, oh, we want to get every other record in this case. And we can use this notation here. Um, and when you get into topic four, you'll see things like uh, referencing the columns and the rows. Um, and we can do something called, like we can use indexing and we go, usually call this a slicing um, up and everything like that. There's other cases um, I kind of mentioned is that some data are better represented with uh, multi-dimensional arrays like for example, um, picture data, right? Is that what we have, if you all know how digital images are actually um, uh, stored and used, um, basically there's a pixel and then there's a value for that pixel of saying how bright it is, you know, zero being like super dark, 255, if, you know, that's usually the general value um, being super bright. So if I guess there's like a zero, a scale from zero to one, you would have a floating number value for each pixel of how bright it is. And then, if you had a black and white photo, you would just say, okay, is it dark or is it bright? And that would just be a 2D array. If you had um, RGB, like it's basically a colored space of photo, um, it's not just one pixel value of saying how bright and how dark, it's saying how bright is the red pixel? How bright is the green pixel? How bright is the blue pixel? And you would actually have a 2D array for each, uh, what we call a channel. Um, and it was kind of going far ahead than what we'll talk about it, um, in the near future, but just kind of showing you like how some data would be represented in that way. Um, but we can also have a bunch of other multidimensional data like this. Um, but you'll see this most commonly with Pandas itself. Hopefully that answered your question, Becky. Um, <laughs> all right, I see some head nods, some thumbs up, cool. All right, um, any other questions that people can type in? If you get, if there's a really burning question, I can like do the whole setup with my mic and stuff again, uh, but. I don't want to put everyone through that. So pretty good. Cool. All right, so I will stop recording here.